Reaction time, as you guys know, is one of the most important, if not the most important aspect of our sport if you want to be competitive. The task is simple, a light bulb turns on and you let go of a switch or you push a button or you somehow complete a circuit which activates your delay cycle or activates your trans brake solenoid. But with as absolutely cutthroat as the competition level has become in our sport, there has become zero room for error. There's absolutely zero space to leave anything on the table at the starting line. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at reaction time, specifically the physical aspect of actually letting go of the trans brake button inside your race car. Stay tuned. This video is brought to you by K&R Performance. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can save 5% on your entire order at krperformance.com. I think there's three main things that go into the actual physical aspect of perfecting your let go. The first would be the actual button that you choose to use to activate your delay cycle. The second would be how you mount that button and where you choose to mount that button inside your race car. And finally, the third is the different ways to actually use that button, the human interaction with that button, the actual physical muscle movements that you use to trigger that button. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through different buttons in this video, but I will mention that my two favorite trans brake buttons have to probably be the Biando 00 button, which is the red one that I have here. And I've also really began to like the Biando, it's called the standard small mushroom button. It's like a small silver button that I have mounted in my car right now. The main difference between the Biando 00 button and that other small silver mushroom button that I'm talking about is, is the button part itself is obviously bigger and a different shape, but this button has a little bit of a spring pressure built into the button, um, whereas that small standard mushroom button, there's literally nothing built into the button. The only resistance that you're overcoming when you depress that button is built into the micro switch itself. So that button is more like the minimalist approach to trans brake buttons, if you will. Um, it's kind of eliminating a lot of variables. I feel like it can be really, really precise on that button. I can really feel the micro switch, whereas there's a little bit more going on with this uh, double O button from Biando. Uh, both are great buttons. I've used this for like most of my life, uh, but I've just recently began really liking that other button as well. If you wanna learn more about trans brake buttons and all the different styles that are out there, I would refer you to uh, one of Rocky McLean's videos. He has an awesome video out there where he actually does like a, a tier list of all the different trans brake buttons available on the market and he ranks them and gives you his thoughts on those. So I will link that video down in the description go and check it out if you are interested. When it comes to mounting your trans brake button, obviously there's infinite possibilities and I really don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do this. It's just whatever you're most comfortable with. Later on in this video, I have some creative button mounting options. Like the old man is the king of trying different things with trans brake buttons and different placements for trans brake buttons inside of his car. So we'll take a look at his car later on in this video and uh, show you some different options and some different things that he's tried as far as uh, button mounting position. But first I wanna dive into the meat of this video, which is going to be the actual physical mechanic associated with letting go of your trans brake button. Think about the physical way that you are letting go of your trans brake button when you are practicing. Notice that I said practicing, I think is really important to only be thinking about it when you're practicing, I guess what I'm saying is you, what you don't want to have happen is you don't wanna be thinking about how you're letting go of the button when you're on the starting line. The goal would be to effectively practice in the most realistic way possible or feasible, preferably inside of your race car or like myself, I, I built a simulator that's very, very similar to my race car. It's the same steering wheel. You can build yourself a little simulator setup, uh, but get yourself into a practice mode that's as close to realistic as possible. Experiment with different physical ways to let go of your button. Determine what is best for you and what is most comfortable for you, what you believe is most consistent for you, and then just repetition like crazy until it becomes muscle memory and you don't have to think about it 
on the actual racetrack. I think it's really important to try and have like maximum focus on the starting line and uh, doing something repetition like that, something physical, can be turned into almost a habit, almost a, a muscle memory, if you will, with enough repetition and enough practice and just free up that brain power for, for focusing on what you need to focus on on the starting line, not actually how you're letting go of the button. This is where pocket trees really fall short in my opinion. Like, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my Porter Tree Pocket, I use it all the time, but it is not doing me any favors when it comes to the actual physical let go of a trans brake button because it's completely different than actually being strapped in a car. When you're fine tuning your own preferred physical let go, think about the muscles and the joints in your arms or your hands that you're actually using to interact with that button. Obviously you could let go in a bunch of different ways, but you need to find what is uh, most consistent, repeatable, and, and most comfortable for you. So what I do is I actually extend my thumb and my hand out as straight as possible, locked out in the extended position, then I line up directly straight in front of the trans brake button. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually using my arm muscle to both push the trans brake button, and then I'm also using the arm muscle to react to the tree and pull off of that trans brake button. And what I'm trying to do is stay, you know, exactly straight on that button as I'm pushing it, and then also pulling straight off of that button. I'm not going off to the side, I'm not rolling off, I'm not sliding off, I'm not doing anything weird. I'm trying to do it exactly the same every time. That's what I found has worked the best for me. I don't know if there's any scientific or like physiological evidence behind this, but someone once told me that using a larger muscle, something like your arm muscle instead of like a, a finger muscle or something like that is actually a little bit more consistent. Now I don't know if there's any truth to that or if it's the same inside of all humans, but in my experience and in my practice I have found that actually using the larger muscle seems to work better and, and yields more consistent, more repeatable results for me. Not everybody's let go is gonna look exactly the same and everybody's car is a little bit different too. Let me hop in the old man's car and show you what he's got going on because because it's crazy. So the old man is the king of trying different trans brake buttons and mounting trans brake buttons in different places. In fact, his car right now has three trans brake buttons in it and they're all functional. I mean, he's got the standard steering wheel button here. This is the one that I use when I hop in this car. I don't think he uses it at all. Uh, he's also got one over here on the dash, kind of get your arm extended a little bit further. He's tried that for a while. Um, so he had one up on here on the dash, but his personal favorite and what he has been using for like a year and a half now is this cross arm roll cage mounted. Uh, that is a double O button inside of there with one of our shields on it. And uh, what he does is he actually puts his arm across his body. And what he's trying to do is, is maximize the use of that big muscle like I mentioned before. So that's what he's trying to do. And he figures he can get more comfortable and get more pull down with that muscle. Uh, that's what works for him, that's what's comfortable for him. He also has told me that what he does is he kind of like pushes his whole body up against the left side of the car here, keeps him nice and tight against that button, kind of makes him one with the car. Uh, it kind of helps him work through like the vibration of the car and stuff like that that's happening on the starting line. He finds that that works really good if he's kind of up against the left side of his cage. He uses his pointer finger and he pulls right, right back. He gives himself a lot of room to do that motion inside the car. So there's some ideas for you. One thing worth noting is that I've actually tried to bring my own physical let go that I'm used to over from the dragster into the door car now that we have Old Black back on the track. I've actually had a comment or two on the channel of people saying that it looks like I have a very unique way of letting go of the button inside of the door car. In reality, I'm just trying to keep as close as I possibly can between the two race cars. In my dragster, the steering wheel is much smaller. My hands are much closer together. On my practice simulator, my hands are much closer together. And uh, when I hopped into the door car, the steering wheel is much bigger. It just felt way different. It felt like it was throwing me off in regards to my muscle memory and what I was used to. So I actually decided to move my left hand up closer to the actual trans brake button, put my hands closer together, and it, and it kind of brought me right back to what I'm used to uh, with my muscle memory. It felt natural. I was able to free up the brain power for focusing on what I need to focus on, and uh, it just seems to have been working for me. Kind of looks weird, but 
it's been working. I've seen a ton of different like styles and ways to interact with the trans brake button, so don't be afraid to try something different. I've seen people use like a larger button while they'll have their fist and they'll let go with their entire fist. I've seen people like group up their, their pointer finger and their thumb together and, and interact with the button like all as one almost. Heck, my dad even made a like a football mouthpiece that had a micro switch inside of it and reacted to the tree with his jaw and it actually worked. I mean, when you think about some of these other methods, like if you use a, a fist or something, like you're actually eliminating, uh, you know, a bunch of different joints in your fingers and you're not gonna come off the button, like by rolling your finger or come off the side, you're gonna be coming directly off. There's maybe a lot of advantages to trying some of these different methods. Uh, so don't, don't be afraid to experiment, I guess. Once you find what you believe works best for you, just work it and then it becomes muscle memory and then take it to the track. Speaking of the track, one place you're gonna be wanting to stop first is krperformance.com. K&R Performance Engineering is home to all my favorite bracket racing products, including starting line enhancers, digital dial boards, wiring kits, onboard air compressors, and of course, the ProCube delay box. I highly recommend you guys check them out at krperformance.com, and don't forget to use discount code GALLSTAR5. Save yourself 5% on your entire order at krperformance.com. Before we wrap this one up, I'm sure I'll be asked about these trans brake shields that you guys have probably seen in a bunch of my videos. Um, I actually make them myself. I have a bunch of different styles for different trans brake buttons. Um, I have some for that are intended for pushing. I have some that are intended for releasing. I have some that are intended for use with their thumb, some that are for your pointer finger. Um, so I have a bunch of different styles. A couple of them are up on the Golf Star TV Swag Shop if you're interested. I'm currently working to get a bunch more of them up on the Swag Shop, but that will be linked down in the description if you guys are interested in, uh, in trying something like this. I hope you guys have learned something or have gotten some ideas about perfecting your physical let go in this video. I don't know if there's a wrong way to do it, but I'd love to hear what you guys do down in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, all the things that you do. Visit the Golf Star TV Swag Shop, link down in the description to support the creation of more videos just like this one. I will see you guys in the next one later. Had a, a mouthpiece with a button in it? Yeah. You still have that? No. Oh. Did it work? Well, probably was you needed to like spit it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I can't breathe good through my nose ever. So I can leave it in there.